Hello my friends, in today's video we will be comparing GoPro Hero 12 Black and DJI Osmo Action 4. Both GoPro and DJI are continuing with the evolution of their action cameras. DJI has done quite a lot of work on their latest Osmo Action. It uses a larger sensor, it has improved low light performance and maybe most importantly sharpness settings. Hero 12 is probably the most underwhelming update in the history of GoPro cameras, but it is still a very good action camera as I've explained in my review. In this video we will compare the performance and the feature set of Hero 12 and Action 4 to find out which one is more suitable for your adventures. In terms of physical appearance, very little has changed on both. Both are conventional action cameras with a lens and smaller screen on the front side and a larger screen on the back side. Both are about 7cm wide but the GoPro is taller and therefore more bulky. The build quality is also very similar. Both have rubberized edges and the whole front side. Both feel very solid and very durable. Action 4 has better water resistance rating at 18 meters, GoPro is rated for 10 meters. The lens cover is removable on both, but the Action 4 uses a proper thread, which is in my opinion simpler and better solution than rotating mechanism on Hero 12 Black. The only physical change on the GoPro is the addition of a quarter inch mount on the bottom side. I greatly appreciate it because it provides a lot more mounting options. DJI uses a magnetic system, which is very fast and convenient to use. Action 4 also comes with a protective housing which allows you to mount the camera vertically which is an advantage over Hero 12. Both went an extra mile in terms of the mounting options but DJI includes housing so it wins. The sensor and lens philosophy of GoPro and DJI is even more different than last year. Hero 12 uses a 27 megapixel sensor. Technically it is a 1 over 1.9 inch sensor, but it is basically a vertically stretched version of 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. Osmo Action 4 uses a 12 megapixel sensor, but it is much larger 1 over 1.3 inch 4x3 sensor. The most important difference between the Action 4 and Hero 12 is in my opinion the field of view and therefore the type of footage that they produce. Hero 12 uses about 16mm equivalent lens in wide setting, whereas the Action 3 uses extremely wide 11mm equivalent in ultra wide mode. You can get wider field of view on GoPro and narrower field of view on Action 4, but that will compromise image quality in both cases. 16 and 11mm is where you get the best image quality respectively. I would say that the field of view of DJI is more suitable for POV, actual sports and action use. Field of view on the GoPro is in my opinion more suitable for point and shoot type of use. Of course it is much more nuanced than that. For example for driving videos I prefer Osmo Action 4 for this composition, but the field of view of the GoPro is more suitable for this angle. I think that both field of views are equally useful, which is also why I own both. Hero 12 can shoot 8x7 footage. DJI can actually shoot 4x3 or 8x6 4K video, so it has pretty similar capabilities. As I've explained in my Hero 12 review, it is useful for reframing or shooting for multiple platforms. Hero 12 gives you a little bit more flexibility, but 4x3 on DJI is also very useful. If you are deciding between 4 and 12, I would say that choosing your preferred field of view is the best place to start. Osmo Action 4 got a lot closer to the GoPro in terms of detail. Action 4 offers sharpness settings, which makes a huge difference. I use the lowest one, which provides the most natural and artifact free footage. GoPro has been a benchmark in action camera video detail for a while and it still captures a little bit more detail, but only in good conditions. Another big difference is the video processing. As I've explained in my Hero 12 review, GoPro uses heavy local tone mapping. This is an HDR method that reveals a great amount of detail in shadows. Unfortunately, it also reveals a lot of noise. 
It generally works great on a nice sunny day, but in more extreme situations, such as this one, it might still give you almost cartoonish look. Action 4 does not use local tone mapping. It still captures a very nice amount of dynamic range though. I am very happy with the dynamic range even in extreme situations. The whole output looks much more natural. Much like the field of view, it is a matter of preference. GoPro is an action camera, so it makes sense that it wants to reveal as much action as possible, but my personal preference is DJI's processing approach. Both can shoot 10 bit footage. It doesn't make that much difference on an action camera, but it is definitely nice to have. Minimal focus distance is very similar. I would say that 30 cm is acceptable on both. At 40 cm, you will definitely get maximal sharpness. Importantly, both are completely fine for vlogging. The low light performance is much better with DJI. Honestly, the low light performance of the GoPro is pretty bad. It is just mushy with a lot of noise and very little detail. There is much less noise on the Action 4 and it can also retain a lot more detail. The low light is still the biggest weakness of the GoPro. If you intend to shoot a lot in the low light, Action 4 might be a better choice. GoPro shoots more detailed stills thanks to that 27 megapixel sensor. 12 megapixel stills from the Action 4 are actually very nice. There is still plenty of detail in those, so they are more than usable for common types of publishing. Both can shoot RAWs with similar dynamic range and options for post-production. The stabilization in good conditions is very similar. There is not much improvement over the previous generations, but that is fine. It is also a bit difficult to compare them because of the field of view difference, but I would say that it is a draw. Both are more than sufficient for panning, walking, driving, cycling and so on. An advantage of the GoPro is the auto boost function that can adjust the crop and efficiency if you start running or something similar. It is pretty subtle, but it works. The stabilization in the low light is much better on the Osmo Action 4. With GoPro, you can actually see shaking even in static shots and walking is pretty bad. With Action 4, static shots are very stable and the walking is much better. Both cameras also offer 360 degrees horizon leveling. That means that you can rotate the camera, but the horizon will stay level. This mode introduces significant crop on both cameras. The displays on both are carried over from previous generations and both are very good. Both are 2.25 inch screens and the quality of the panel is about the same. The brightness is also sufficient on both, but DJI's screen is brighter. The main difference is the aspect ratio. DJI's screen is 16x9, GoPro screen is 4x3. If you mostly shoot 16x9 video, DJI screen will serve you better because it won't waste the space with the black bars. If you mostly shoot 4x3 or 8x7, GoPro screen will be more suitable. Both cameras also have a 1.4 inch screen with a very similar panel and image quality. It is possible to use both screens at the same time on both cameras. An advantage on the front screen on the Action 4 is that it is touch sensitive and you can use it to control almost everything, which brings us to the user interface. I am pretty happy with the user interface on both. Both use swipe gestures and main menu, but there are some differences. GoPro uses the presets. I didn't like them too much in the past, but additional options such as 8x7 filming made me appreciate them. The new image quality setting menu is also more user friendly. DJI has a dedicated image quality menu, which is very easy to use as well. I still prefer DJI menu because everything is easy to access and the items in the main menu are a lot larger. Some rather important settings on the GoPro, such as the display brightness, are buried relatively deep in the menu, but it also has a very good user interface overall. The front screen user interface on the Action 4 was basically taken from the Action 2, so it also allows you to change most of the settings. That might be very convenient in situations where the main screen is not easily accessible. The smartphone app for both is really good. I slightly prefer having full screen preview available all the time and the overall structure of the DJI MIMO app. 
GoPro app has that separate settings menu with no preview option, which I don't like that much, but it is also completely fine to use. Fortunately, GoPro has fixed the biggest issue of the app. The preview in the app will no longer go black after you hit the recording button, which means that you can monitor the footage through the app whilst you are recording. The battery capacity of both is similar. GoPro uses 1720mAh battery, DJI uses 1770mAh battery. The battery life is better on DJI. In side-by-side -side test, shooting the highest quality 25p video on both cameras, that means 5.3k on GoPro and 4k on DJI, I got 100 minutes with the GoPro and 115 minutes with DJI. Shooting 4K on GoPro actually doesn't make any difference. I haven't done any extreme overheating tests, but I can say that both are among the best in this regard. I have taken a couple of 30 minute clips with both using the highest 25p settings with no issues. Osmo Action 4 was a little bit cooler. To sum up, GoPro Hero 12 Black and DJI Osmo Action 4 are very capable cameras as expected. If I had to pick a winner, it would have to be the Action 4 because of the low light performance and my personal preference for video processing. DJI has definitely introduced a lot of improvements over the previous generation. Larger sensor and sharpness settings improve the image quality a lot. GoPro may still provide better image quality in ideal conditions, but the Action 4 is now very close. In bad conditions, DJI takes over by a significant margin. The most important decision-making factor is, in my opinion, still the field of view. The second most important factor is the approach to the video processing. If you are deciding between Hero 12 and Action 4, I recommend focusing on that because they are very close in other categories. Both are very well made, both offer sophisticated mounting options and very good displays on both sides. The stabilization is also excellent on both. If you need two action cameras, I highly recommend one of each. This is a great combination that complements each other due to the difference in field of view. Nevertheless, I am very happy with both. Both have come a long way to provide excellent results, which means that I can recommend both. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.